Welcome to the brand new Aston Martin Vanquish S Volante. Now, I'm not actually allowed to talk about this car at all. Uh, there is a video on this car coming very soon, but I'm currently on the drive back to return it to Aston Martin in Gaydon. And I felt compelled to talk to you guys and share some updates and changes with regards to, I guess, the Mr. JWW garage. And so, Here's what's up, and here's what we need to discuss, and as always, I'd love to hear back from you guys as to what you think might be cool, what might not be sensible, etc. So, first things first, the GT3 is sold. I know, I know I haven't mentioned it yet. Uh, reason for that being it was it was gone, it wasn't gone, it was gone, it wasn't gone, and now it's finally gone. Uh, it was genuinely sad to see that car go. I really, really loved it. I still believe performance per pound or supercar per pound the gt3 i think outdoes anything i've ever driven really i mean okay it, di it didn't have the straight line punch that the lt had and it might not have been as exotic as the f12 but it still backed it all up with a phenomenal driving experience the exhaust note particularly with the sharkworks exhaust was fantastic <laughs> I don't know how they did that. I mean, it was phenomenal. I actually preferred the gear shift in the GT3 to the GT3 RS. Reason being, there was a very slight nudge upon shifting and also it revved out to 9,000. So it, for me, it was a better road car anyway. Um, which leads me to say, why did I sell that car? <laughs> you might be thinking, you sound like a madman. You clearly loved it. Why did you sell it? Well, two reasons. Uh, first thing is I did 20,000 miles in that car in the first 12 months. And by normal road, road car standards, that doesn't really sound a lot. But by GT3 standards, if you went online and looked at the pre-owned market of GT3s, a 20,000 miler stands out like a sore thumb. It was only me as the madman that I am, or should I say passionate about sharing cars with you guys, that I used the GT3 as a daily driver. And a lot of people I bumped into was like, when you say daily, you mean like every weekend, right? I'm like, no, every single day, uh, hence 20,000 miles. So first things first was if I did one more season in that car and used it as my daily, it'd end up being a, a 40,000 mile GT3 in two years, which is gonna do no one any favors. And second of all, the generation two GT3 launched at Geneva just a few months ago. Again, not going to do that car any favours. So I thought it's probably about time now to get out of that car. Plus, I'd also at some point really like another GT3. There's a Gen 2 out and hopefully I'm going to get my hands on one of those one day. I'm not sure if it'll be anytime soon. Who knows? But yeah, definitely one day the aim of the game is to get back into another GT3 because to this day it's still one of my favorite cars that I have ever owned. Next thing, F12. I've decided to sell the F12, okay? And the reason being is that I'm just getting no use out of that car. Mostly because I'm actually getting more enjoyment at this stage out of engines in the back. The front engine layout of the F12 Berlinetta makes for stunning aesthetics. It, it is such a beautiful car. For me though, it's the way that car looks and the way that car sounds. It drives well as a Grand Tourer, but I'm not really a Grand Tourer kind of guy. I much prefer being able to grab a car by the scruff of its neck and throw it around an Alpine road. And truth be told, that's probably the last car that I'm gonna choose to do an Alpine run in. It'd be great to crunch those motorway miles. But then I recently did that in the 675 LT and it wasn't exactly a chore. So I came to this conclusion where I went back to my garage a few days ago since I've finally been back in the country. That's something else. I'm always traveling so much that I never really get a chance to drive that car. Other reasons, similar to the GT3, the 812 Superfast has also recently launched and ultimately that won't do any favors for the value of the F12. So that car will go soon. 
and that leaves me with the 675LT. Now, you might have seen that I recently just drove the McLaren 720S. I haven't made my mind up yet on what's happening with the 675LT, namely because the 720S, in a nutshell, offers 90% of what the 675LT does. However, I bought the LT for that last 10%, and that's the rawer, more visceral, I guess, track biased edge. Now, for me, the thing that would fix that on the 720, I'm certainly 98% of that car would be perfect if it had an exhaust. And at the risk of sounding like a chav, I know that probably isn't the kind of car that you want to go and stick an exhaust on, but for me, it was just lacking that emotional punch and it all came down to sound. Everything else about the way that car drives was phenomenal. But the way it sounded didn't set me alight. It didn't pull on the heartstrings. And I think the only way to sort that is ultimately with an exhaust. My thinking here is if I have an exhaust on a 720S, it really is gonna provide, I would say 95, maybe 98% of what the LT does. It, I mean, it's breadth of ability really is that good. So then we have to question, what are we doing with the 675 LT? Right now, I haven't made my mind up. It might be that I drive them back to back and really compare and see, but my instinct is, what's the point? What's the point in having the 675 LT? So having said all of these things, what this essentially leaves me with, other than the incoming 720S, it's almost a blank canvas, <laughs> which is, it's kind of, it's kind of, I mean, it's super exciting. Right now I'm thinking of all sorts of cars which might be able to come and replace various things. Because this channel is all about immersing you in experiences of as many different cars and adventures as we possibly can. So uh, yeah, comments, put in the comments, cars that you would like to see on this channel. And, you know, as much as I'd love to see a Chiron and a Pagani 760JW, that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. So by all means, comment what you would like to see. Hypercars might not make it just yet. Anyway, guys, that's a very quick update. I know this isn't the normal uh, style of video that I would make, but because these uh, cars form such a solid structure of this channel, I felt that I owed it to you guys to explain what was happening with those cars, what's coming, what's going, and what you might see. And as always, I love hearing from you as to what uh, you would love to see next on this channel. Anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!